So uh, today we're going to be tackling problem 8 on Project Euler, which is the largest product in a series. The four adjacent digits of the 1000 digit number that have the greatest product are 9 times 9 times 8 times 9. We get 5,832, right? Uh, this problem, when you first look at it, uh, can be intimidating. Uh, if you haven't done anything before that has to do with uh, combinations, uh, you typically would think that uh, it's hard to solve. But for people that have been doing programming for a long time, um, this is probably just like finding either like a unique character inside of a string. But instead of us actually, uh, you know, keeping track of what we find, uh, we are actually getting the product of the four adjacent numbers. Okay, so. Uh, how do we do this problem? So typically what we do is we we'll keep all these numbers inside of a string or some type of data structure you can pick, all right? But a string would be more appropriate for this problem, okay? And um, what we might do is we start with the first character and then we get the first four numbers, right? So three, one, and six would be the first four adjacent numbers. And we know that to get the next four adjacent number, what we have to do is increment by one here and add that adjacent to it, right? If we get the substring, then uh, we would start from one here and uh, the substring would be at five, one and five, but we'll get this four because five is not inclusive, right? And um, it's literally a very, very solid, easy question to actually do. Um, there is not a lot of tricks in this problem. Um, the only way that we can optimize this problem is by looking to see if any of the sequence of numbers inside of the substring that we get actually has a zero. If that has a zero, then we know that zero multiplied by anything else will give us zero. So we don't have to, we don't care about the product after we find that number. We can just go ahead and break out of it. And that's how we optimize this problem. All right. So uh, with no further ado, um, we can start solving this problem. Uh, but this problem is actually asking us to find the 13 adjacent digit, right? So we know that the biggest numbers that we can find in here are nines, all right? So to get the value that we start a product of all nine 13s, if we find any of them, it would be uh, the power of, uh, it would be nine to 13 power, right? Uh, which is actually bigger than an int. So to do this problem, you probably need to store this inside of a long, okay? Um, but as you guys know me, I like to use data structures because they're provided for us for a reason. And I want people to get comfortable using libraries other than primitive types. I see a lot of people using primitive types in almost everything that they do because they're comfortable and the knowledge base is that they're not really growing, um, you know, with the programming, they're sticking to what they know to work, but they're not trying things out. You don't try things out, you don't know exactly um, how to use your libraries and um, how beneficial they are to you. Uh, I see a lot of people don't, don't even know how to use threats. Um, and nowadays, threats are very, very important, right? Uh, so being able to uh, use other libraries are great. So let's go ahead and actually solve this problem and let me stop my yapping for a second. So what I did was this morning I woke up. It took me like five minutes to solve this problem. I literally just went onto the uh, to Google and typed in character so I can find uh, methods in the character class to actually um, convert from uh, char to character. And you know there are a bunch of ones here uh, you could use, right? So. Using libraries are very important. If you don't know, if you're using a language and you don't know uh, what to use to convert something, just go to the documentation and search it up. If you know the class name, search the class name, look at the documentations. Uh, typically, they'll tell you uh, what uh, you need to use. And uh, so just look for something that you need to pass in that returns, you know, an int um, and you're good. All right. So that's what pretty much what I did. And I was able to work out this problem uh, in about five minutes. But I've seen problems like this before, so it's not a big deal. All right, so let's solve this problem. Uh, I'm gonna go into where I normally solve my product, uh, problems, and I'm gonna create a new class, Java class, and I'm gonna call this uh, largest uh, product. All right. Uh, 
Uh, with just one here, uh, what I want to do first is create main because uh, we need to get the data and it's a pain because the way that IntelliJ kind of uh, put things, it adds an extra uh, slash n to it. So I want to just create a string here and I'm going to call this uh, values. Okay. And this is going to equal to. And uh, what I want to do is go back to Euler. Not here. All right. And copy all of this. And we're just going to paste it. Okay. And we're just going to go ahead and control V here. Uh, see how it adds this like slash ends and stuff. We have to go ahead and take off all of this. Uh, just because we don't want any spacing in between. And I guess I could have just done a find and replaced um, using software. I guess because I started this way, I might as well just go through the process manually. I know I should probably just pause the video and come back, but I mean, it's good to, you know, Show people what you're doing all the way through. All right, so let's do that. And we have our data here and that's pretty good. All right, so next one do is we actually wanna create a method. And this is gonna be static as well because they're easy to call the static and I'm gonna call this one product. And what this is gonna do is take in a string, which is gonna be our values. And a final int, which is going to be the JSON um, digit. All right. All right. So what we need first is a variable to keep track of our max. And you guys know that I'm using Java 10, so we can use uh, there for local variables. And this is going to be zero. All right. So next one do is want to create a for loop. So it's a for there x equal to zero. I remember that we want to take the first four numbers. So we say X plus the JSON digit, right? So we get the first four, the first 13 number. So we say adjacent digits. So you can see that is less than um, values dot length. And then we do X plus plus. And next, what I want to do is create a variable here to hold our product. This is a good place to create it because uh, once the inner loop is done, uh, the outer loop is going to go back up and increment and then we can reset it back again to a uh, big integer dot one right? because we need to multiply. So next what we do is we take the substring of our values, right? So I'm going to call this sub and this is going to equal to uh, values dot substring and we want to start with X. So remember that if we have a string, we simply come from zero with the indexes. So we have a string of four it goes zero, one, two, three, right? And then remember that substring takes the value and it is exclusive. The last value is exclusive, okay? So we'll do X and then here, what we would do is we would do um, X plus adjacent digit. And now we have a substring, all right? Uh, what I wanna do is instead of actually uh, just Continue. I want to uh, print this out so that we see that all the strings are actually um, formatted the way that we actually uh, get a substring. So I'm going to do here. I'm going to do sub, right? And then I'm going to go ahead here and concatenate that with the actual size of it. So we can see that the size are consistent, which is going to be the length, all right? And what I'm going to do here is just return a big integer dot two, so just to make sure we get out the error. So let's get down here and let's do SLT here and let's do product. And then we're gonna pass in our values here, which is this thing. And let's say we wanna get um, our 13s, right? So we wanna make sure that everything is, um, we have 13 values for all the products that we actually want to multiply. So let's go ahead and uh, let me run this here so that we can come up. All right, so as you guys can see here, uh, this is actually formatted in such a way that we actually get 13 values and our substring is consistent as you guys can see here so that all the values that we multiply are in 13s. Okay. 
So with that uh, said and done, we can actually go down and create an inner loop to do all of the multiplication here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. All right, so like I said before that if our sequence of numbers that we uh, we get inside of our strap string has a zero as one of the characters or values, we know that any number that multiplies zero is gonna be zero. So we can just go ahead and break if we find one. So we need to create an if statement. We're gonna say if, actually for loop first so for loop there and then j equals to zero right and uh, j is less than a uh, sub the length then we're going to do a j plus plus all right so next we want to say if right um character dot get numeric value of uh sub dot char at j right and we're gonna see if that's equal equal to zero so if we convert the character at any part of j and that's equal to zero then we can go ahead and just break because the product is going to be zero else uh what we can do is that we can then get the product so we say product equals uh product dot multiply and then what we want to do is we can use big integer dot value off and we want to get along so I'm going to get character dot numeric value and then that's going to be j I mean my bad we're going to get character numeric value I'm going to get this down here and then we want to do sub dot char at j uh, so long like I told you guys, when I woke up in the morning and I was solving this problem, literally, I just kind of went into the uh, the character class and found things to make this work. So, and once this is done, we want to go ahead and actually uh, get the max. We're gonna say max equals to max dot max, and then we're gonna pass in product here. All right, so now we get the max, and then what I want to do is change this to return the max. So just return max here. So now let's go into our um, main method and change this to four because we want to see if our base case is actually right. So let's go ahead and run this. And let me push this up here. And you guys can see that we get uh, 5,832. Uh, we should match the 5,832 here. So now that we're actually uh, done with seeing that part just right, we can change this to 13 to see if we get that value, okay, the right answer. And as you guys can see, this is the right answer. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, there are more tutorials to come. I'm gonna be having Unity tutorials, I have Java tutorials, and um, I'm busy and stuff. Um, but if you ever have any questions, guys, you wanna ask me, uh, please leave it down in the comment section below. So that I can know. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Please like and subscribe. Bye bye.